So you've been called to give testimony in court, whether it's for your own case or as a witness in another case, the way you portray yourself will have a significant impact on the way you're viewed by the judge, jury and the attorneys. Recently, I had the opportunity to interview a trial lawyer with 30 years of experience, Bruce Adelson, CEO of Federal Compliance Inc. and a former senior attorney for the Justice Department. Let's see what he had to say. Great, fantastic. And what about for somebody who's being called as a witness? I mean, what, what are the lawyers looking to get out of that person? Well, of course, each lawyer representing each side in a case is looking for a certain testimony, certain evidence to support his or her case, his or her cause. So the lawyer is looking for witnesses to be relaxed, of course, for witnesses to tell the truth, but also for witnesses to kind of exude a certain confidence that they know what they're talking about, that what they're testing, testifying about is accurate, and that they have a full command of whatever facts they're being asked to discuss. So sitting, when you're sitting in that witness chair, after you raise your right hand and take an oath, try to be as confident and comfortable as possible, because that body language, that attitude, will be very obvious to the judges, also very obvious to the lawyers, and if there's a jury, the jury will pay close attention to what that witness is saying. Totally open to interpretation, even misinterpretation, right? And that's a very good point. That you know, If you think about all the cues that we all exhibit or all see in our daily lives, those are magnified in the courtroom because of what's at stake. So being open to interpretation, misinterpretation, and understanding the whys, wheres, and wherefores in a courtroom is absolutely essential. Appearing relaxed, confident, honest, and congruent in what we're saying are all indicators of truthfulness. They all show that a person is credible and trustworthy. And that's exactly how we want to appear in court. However, what's interesting is a Dr. David DeSteno of Northeastern University has found that there are four things that we can do with our bodies which will indicate to other people that we're not trustworthy. What are those four things and what can we do to avoid them? Let's go into it one by one. So body language no-no, number one, don't touch your hands. If you touch your hands while you're in the witness box or even clasp your hands together, you can send the signal that perhaps you're holding something back or you're anxious about what you're saying. Now while this isn't necessarily an indicator that you're being untruthful, it's how people perceive it to be that's the danger. Number two, touching your face. Now, it's true that sometimes touching our face like this, where we're not actually leaning on our hand, but our hand just touches our face, is an indicator that we're concentrating. However, in court, if you've got to concentrate and you're not sharing what's going on in your head, then I might be tempted to think you're being deceptive. So it's best to keep the hands away from the face. Number three, Crossing your arms. Now we've been told since we were young that when we cross our arms, essentially we're blocking ourselves off. And while it's not necessarily, again, an indicator that we are being dismissive or that we are holding back anything, other people might think that. And in court, it's all about what other people think, particularly the judge and the jury. Now before we get into number four, I want to give you a quick trick to help with numbers one through three. Touching our face, touching our hands, and even crossing our arms might happen because we're feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious, especially if we're not in court very often. So one way we can overcome that anxiety is by taking all that nervous energy and directing it down towards our toes. Our feet can't be seen in the witness box, so go ahead and squeeze your toes, move them around, and have all that anxious energy come out down there. And up here, up top, in what we call the presentation box, you look calm and relaxed. Number four has to do with our posture. It's very important that we don't lean back in our chair. If we do that, we give the indication that we're either disengaged, aloof, or running away from the questions that are being asked of us, and all of those are very bad in the courtroom. Uh, we need to sit up. Posture is important. It's one of the first things people see, and people will judge trustworthiness within 33 milliseconds. So even sitting up straight can have a huge impact on how you're seeing. 
So in review, don't touch your hands, touch your face, cross your arms, or even slouch back in your chair, but rather take all that nervous energy, direct it down to your toes, sit up straight, and be the best possible witness you can be there in court. My name's Ryan Foley, Human Behaviour Specialist. I'll see you next time.